In this video, we're going to be talking about the two signs that your heel pain might be coming from plantar fasciitis. With that said, hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Dana, and if you're new here, I'm a podiatric physician in my final year of residency. And as a podiatrist, I've gotten a ton of comments about heel pain and plantar fasciitis. Sadly, I'm gonna have to ignore every single one of you and your heel pain because I can't give medical advice. So this is just an informational video and is not to be taken as medical advice at all. With that said, here's some disclaimers. This heel pain that we know as plantar fasciitis is a really debilitating disease. It causes severe pain at the bottom of the heel that can stop people from doing their daily activities. This has probably been around for as long as humans have been walking. And there's been a lot of theories behind why this happens, including people in the 1930s who hypothesized it was gonorrhea. Later, people thought it was a heel spur poking into a muscle belly or loss of fat for cushioning of the heel or even micro fractures of the bone. So what really is plantar fasciitis? Well, as the name suggests, plantar fasciitis is inflammation of the plantar fascia, which is the band of fibrous connective tissue that runs from the heel to the front of the foot. So the plantar fascia runs from the heel bone right here to the forefoot. I'll add our own little plantar fascia with tape. Here's the foot. I've added a plantar fascia. So it just runs from the heel bone, which is called the calcaneus, to the forefoot, and it inserts all along the base of the toes. So it's a thick fibrous band, and it helps to maintain the arch of the foot. So plantar fasciitis occurs over time when the plantar fascia is strained beyond its normal extension. This leads to soft tissue inflammation and pain and possibly and possibly growth of a bone spur at the plantar fascia insertion right here. This can be aggravated by inappropriate shoes that lack arch support, especially in the midsole area. A lot of my plantar fasciitis patients come to me and say they do anything to get rid of this pain. So I think a really good first step for anyone at home is to consider whether the pain you're having is really from plantar fasciitis. The last thing you want to do is between plantar fasciitis when you really have something else. If you want an accurate diagnosis, I'd recommend seeing a doctor so they can do a full history and physical exam, possibly imaging, and a full workup so they can see what's going on. But in this video, I'll show you the two main things that I look for when I'm diagnosing plantar fasciitis. Number one and the most important sign is post-static dyskinesia, which means severe pain in your first steps of the morning or severe pain when you first get up after resting for a long time. So another example would be the first couple steps after a long car ride, for example. The reason for this is is when you're resting, the plantar fascia has stayed in a more relaxed position for a long period of time. And then when you step down, instantly pushed back into that stretch position, which causes pain. Having pain in the first few steps of the day is an absolute classic sign of having plantar fasciitis. So if someone with foot pain doesn't have this, you'd want to consider other causes other than plantar fasciitis. Number two sign of plantar fasciitis is pain at the bottom of the heel where the plantar fascia inserts. Everyone's a little bit different. Some people have a diffuse tenderness to their heel. Occasionally people have pain that radiates onto their arch, but I'll show you how to pinpoint this spot. So what you do is raise the big toe and then you'll be able to see the plantar fascia on the skin. And then you feel down the plantar fascia and then press on the insertion point and that will cause pain in someone with plantar fasciitis. One thing that I don't see people talk about a lot is the plantar fascia is actually composed of three bands. So the biggest one is the central band right in the middle and then the medial and the lateral one on the outside. So the central and the medial one inserts on the medial tubercle right here. So that's the reason that usually people with plantar fasciitis feel pain on the inside half of their heel. So a point tenderness right around here. So specifically, if this is the inside of your foot right here, 
right around here. So other things to note, there are some things that put you more at risk of developing plantar fasciitis. Here's some of the things in order of how significant they are in my experience. Number one would be having flat feet, also known as pronated feet or pes planus. The reason for that is you can have an abnormal amount of stretching on the ligament. On the other hand, people with high arched feet can also be more at risk, but not as much as low arch. Equinus, also known as a tight calf muscle or a tight Achilles tendon, will put you at risk. A lot of people whose jobs is to stand on their feet all day get plantar fasciitis pretty often. Along the same lines, if you're an athlete who runs or jumps a lot, so classic examples would be a dancer or a runner, or being significantly overweight or obese. But an important thing to know is, although plantar fasciitis is very common, not all heel pain is plantar fasciitis. There's a variety of other nerve, bone, and tendon disorders in the foot that could be causing your symptoms. But not all heel pain is even coming from the heel itself. For example, sometimes if a patient has sharp pain in both of their feet, they'll clue the clinician in to think of possible referred pain from the back. What? That's right, back pain can sometimes be referred to the feet. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. So as a review, the two signs you look for in plantar fasciitis are one, pain is worst in the first steps of the day or the first steps after a long period of rest. And two, you can pinpoint the pain at the bottom of the heel at the insertion of the plantar fascia, especially when you're lifting your big toe in the hoopsure maneuver. These are just two general signs. So if you think you might have plantar fasciitis, I definitely encourage you to make appointment with your podiatrist and get a diagnosis and treatment. Luckily, there are many clinically proven treatments for plantar fasciitis. Certain things like steroid injection can only be done in the podiatrist's office, but many other things like activity modification, icing, and stretching regimen can be started at home. My next video will show you a stretching exercise routine and other examples of how you can treat heel pain at home. So if you want to watch that video, I'll place a link right here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.